you, it's because there's obviously delay and I can't um, respond to it quick enough. Um, so, welcome to Making ISK Through Exploration. Um, I'm Tiberius Stargazer. I'm a long-term member of Brave. I'm a member of Thrall Nation. Um, we do a lot of indie stuff and things like that, um, which is a bit weird because I generally spend all my time shooting people in the face, um, which goes completely against what they do. Um, and so that's basically me. But one of the main things that I do to make money in game is basically exploration. So, what am I going to do on this lesson today? So, first of all, I'm going to go through what is exploration? Uh, why do you do exploration? What ships do you use um, for exploration? Um, what equipment do you use? Uh, other useful tools? Um, planning to explore, so what you do before you actually set out. Then I'll do a live demonstration which will um, follow me around basic exploring. I don't know how well that's going to go. It might go horrifically badly because somebody might else see it and try and come and gank me or some stuff like that. But that would just add some fun to the experience, I think. Um, but I'll show you the hacking sites and things like that. Um, and how to sort of run them effectively. And then at the end of it all, we'll have a question and answer session, which um, will be run through um, the fleet chat. So you can type your questions in there and I'll answer them. You can type questions in while I'm doing this as well, and I'll try and answer them in um, the best manner I possibly can. So what is exploration? Um, exploration is a low cost, low skill point requirement, um, player versus environment profession in EVE. Um, exploration is a unique profession that can yield um, a wide variety of rewards from salvage to unique blueprints and even some rare items. It's mainly a solo activity that you can do on your own. Um, exploration leads on to higher tier PvE such as Dead Space Ratting. Uh, exploration can also help provide key materials and items for use in industrial professions such as Tech 1, Tech 2 rig production and provides components for uh, T2 production as well. Exploration skills can ultimately lead on to very valuable player versus player professions such as reconnaissance and combat probing, which if you're looking to become an FC in the future, then that's something that you will also need to be able to do. So why do exploring? Um, it's very low skill point requirement. You can start exploring in less than one day. You can be very proficient at exploring in about four months. Um, requires very little in the way of initial investment, so less than five million is to get started. In comparison to many other professions in no security space, it's low to medium in risk. Uh, and depending on any your depending on your success basically it can yield hundreds of millions of isk for very very little effort uh, and high level exploration is extremely profitable so running dead space sites can yield billions of isk in one go uh, exploring and selling your goods to the alliance can also help our industrial pilots obtain materials they need to keep us going um, and help produce the ships that we need to have to uh, do what we need to, shooting people in the face basically. So what ships do you use to explore? Um, well first of all there's the Tech 1 exploration frigates. Uh, now each of these frigates uh, gains a racial frigate skill bonus per level so for whatever level your skill is of that frigate, whether it be Kaldari frigate, Amar frigate, Galente frigate, uh, Mimitar frigate, um, you get a bonus, 7% bonus to your scan probe strength, which helps you find sites easier. Um, but they also get a roll bonus where they get a 5 plus strength to relic and data analyze a virus, uh, which makes it easier to hack sites as well. So, but what are these particular ships? Well, in the Amara, you've got the Magnate, the Heron is the Kaldari. The Imacus is the Galente, 
and the probe is the mimeter. Now I've put in the slots uh, this shows because this is actually quite important when you're trying to decide which ship to use. Um, now for example all of these ships have three high slots so that's enough for a probe launcher, uh, a cloak, things like that. Um, you've got a bunch of low slots which are pretty useful for if you want to fit uh, warp core stabilizers particularly if you're in the tech ones that might help get you get out in the jam um, but the most important slot layout that you've got to look into when um, oh. choosing a ship is the medium slots so as you can see the Heron by far has the largest number of mid slots and that will allow you to Anybody fit here? things like um, a prop mod um, it allows you to fit things like a cargo scanner so you can scan the um, sites and the containers um, and there's also allows you to fit a data analyzer and a relic analyzer so the more mid slots you have the more flexible you can make your ship any questions on that so far No? Okay, good. So, what are the pros for Tech 1 exploration frigates? Um, very low entry requirements, less than one day to fly, basically. Um, and very cheap and easy to replace. And there's, these holes should cost you no more than maybe 300,000, 400,000 NISC, plus whatever the fittings are. But what are the cons? Well, Weak overall bonuses compared to other exploration ships. Um, they don't have a Cobra Ops cloaking ability. Um, so you can fit a standard prototype or improved cloaking device, but you don't get the ability to walk around with them. So that can leave you vulnerable to things like gate camps or... Um, yeah, it can leave you vulnerable basically to gate camps and bubbles and stuff like that. Um, but it is also vulnerable to higher level sites because of the low tank that you have on them. So, assume for the fact that you've trained into these ships, you've skilled them up, you've been flying around with them for a little bit, um, you're looking to move on to the next level of the ship. Well, what's the next level up from that? Well, the next level up are the Tech 2 exploration frigates. And this is the Anthema, the Buzzard, the Helios, and the Cheetah. Now, Tech 2 Exploration Frigates have slightly different bonuses from the Tech 1 versions. They have a Covert Ops skill bonus, so you have a separate skill that you inject uh, along with the Racial Frigate skill, and that bonus gives you a 20% decrease in cloaking device CPU requirements. So you can fit a Covert Ops cloaking device on this, and the higher you have the Covert Ops skill, the less fitting it will require to be required to use it. Uh, this is really useful because the higher you have that, the more flexibly you can fit your ship. Um, but unlike the Tech 1, it gets a 10% bonus to scanner probe strength, so it has a double bonus for the probes that you launch and the scanning that you do. Um, as a roll bonus, they get a plus 10 uh, to relic and data analyze via strength rather than 5 on the Tech 1s. So, you may have noticed that I've left the slot information on for two of the ships, which is the Buzzard and Cheetah, because they haven't changed from their Tech 1 variants. But, the Anathema and the Helios do have a slightly different slot layout. Uh, so, whereas the Heron was undoubtedly the better of the Tech 1 ships because it has the five medium slots, the Anathema and the Helios get an extra mid slot each. They lose a low slot in the case of Anathema or they lose a high slot in the case of the Helios, but the Buzzard and the Helios both now have uh, five mid slots, which is really, really useful, um, again, for when you want to fit everything that you need, such as a prop mod and a cargo scanner and a relic and a data analyzer and all this sort of stuff. 
Um, now, this means basically the Buzzard and the Helios are just as good as each other, but I would also say that the Helios um, just inches ahead because it gets those extra low slots, which means you can fit cargo expanders or warp core oh. stabilizers or anything like that. So once you get into the Tech 2 Exploration Frigates, Buzzard and the Helios are probably by far the best of them. So what's the pros of the Tech 2 Exploration Frigates? Well, once you've skilled into them, they are the most effective exploration ships. Um, because of their bonuses, they have stronger probes and they have stronger um, hacking ability than any of the other ships. Um, they're much easier to fit allowing for much more flexible all-purpose uses. And more importantly, they can use a covert ops cloak, which gives you a massive advantage um, because you can warp around cloaked, you can go gate to gate cloaked, and it makes it a lot harder for um, enemy ships to catch you. Um, and training into these also gives you access to bombers, which is an extra little bonus as well. And they have a whole different style of gameplay linked to them as well. What about cons though? Um, they have a high skill requirement. If you want to get pretty good at flying these ships, you're looking at about 100 days to fly effectively. Um, they're vulnerable to higher level sites because of uh, they have a low tank again. They have virtually no tank at all. Um, and they also have half the cargo bay of Tech 1 Exploration Frigates. So, whereas the Tech 1 can effectively stay out longer than the Tech 2s because you can collect more stuff and you don't have to return back to base so soon, um, that's the trade off you get for having the Covert Ops cloak. So, what else other ships are there? So, we've got the basic Exploration Frigates, but there's also Sisters of Eve ships. Now these are a pretty unique ship, they were only introduced a few patches ago. Um, and unlike the Tech 1 or the Tech 2 that has a skill based bonus, these ships offer a flat bonus of 37.5% scanner probe strength, or 50% in the case of the Nestor. So it doesn't matter what your skill level is, uh, in flying the actual ship itself, which has two racial uh, skills, uh, Galente and Amar, you will still get that pro bonus. So, if you are trying to move away from the Tech 1 ships, um, but not quite into Tech 2, then the Sisters of Eve ships are a good place to put in the midpoint. And they also get the Tech 2 bonus um, of a 10% bonus to Relic and Data Analyzers as well. A 10 point bonus to Rachel and data and the Lysers. There we go. So, the first of these ships is the Estero, which personally is my little favourite. Um, has two high slots, so you can fit a cloak um, and you can fit a probe launcher. It has four medium slots, so you can fit in a data and relic analyzer, and a prop mod, and a cargo scanner. And it has four low slots, so you've got the ability to fit a tank on there as well, which you can't do so well with the uh, Tech 1 and the Tech 2 Exploration Frigates. Uh, there's also the Stratios, which is the cruiser. Now, again, this is a departure from a frigate. It's a cruiser, it's much larger, it's a bit slower, but it's got more tank. has five high slots, so you can actually fit weapons on this one as well. Again, has five medium slots, so you've got plenty of room to fit everything that you need for exploration. And it has five low slots. Again, plenty of room for tank and everything else. And then last but not least, you have the Nesta, seven high slots, six mid slots, six low slots. So what are the pros of these particular ships? Um, low skill requirement. You don't need to uh, train these ships very high to get their bonuses. Uh, the Asteria and the Stratos are the only Tech 1 ships that can fit Covert Ops cloaks. 
um, which makes them a brilliant stepping point between the T1 and the T2 because once you've got cloaking to four, you can jump straight into one of these ships. They have good tanking ability, so you can run mid-level sites with them, uh, and they're good all-round combat vessels as well. So if you fancy you know, hunting other explorers in your spare time, then one of these ships will definitely do the job. What are the cons? They're very expensive. Um, a, like I said, a Tech 1 exploration frigate might cost you five, six million this to fit out with a basic fitting. Um, a Tech 2 may cost you 30 to 40 million isk to fit out. Uh, the Astero by itself is around 60 to 80 million isk just for the hull, never mind the fittings. So they are pretty expensive in comparison to T1 and T2 exploration ships. And they also have a cloak reactivation delay of 15 seconds. Um, may not seem like a lot, but if you've accidentally decloaked and you need to recloak, that penalty can be a bit of a pain. And you have to make sure that you watch yourself when you jump through gates, that you don't try and warp off too quickly, because if you haven't reached your 15 second timer, and there's a gate camp and you try and move away and recloak, then that might give them just enough time to lock you up and shoot you. So you've got to be careful with that one. Also, don't use the nester. It's far too expensive and it's not very good for exploration. Even though it does have exploration bonuses, really you don't want to be using it. It's a billion S all by itself and it's very, very slow and it's very easy to catch. And worst of all, can't even cloak. So you've trained Tech 1. You've moved into Sisters of Eve, and maybe you've got the Tech 2 ships as well, and you're kind of running around. What's the next level up from those ships? Well, you have the Tech 3 strategic cruisers. They have a specialised subsystem, which gives them a 10% bonus to probe strength per level, which is the same as the Tech 2 um, frigates. So you get a Tech 2 frigate exploration frigate bonus, and they have a 10 a plus 10 strength to virus and relic data analyzers. So that gives you, again, another Tech 2 bonus. And these ships are, of course, the Legion, the Tengu, the Proteus, and the Loki. Pros of these ships, bonuses to probes and analyzers are on par with covert ops ships. Um, they can be interdiction nullified, so Bubbles aren't going to be a problem anymore. Uh, they can use covert ops cloaks, and they can run pretty much any type of site, including the high-end combat sites. Some of the very high-end combat sites, you might want a buddy in one of these to do it with as well, but otherwise, they are the ultimate all-purpose exploration ships. What's the cons? Well, these are the most expensive operation, uh, option for exploration. Uh, they can cost anything between you know, 500 mil to a billion isk to fit out for um, exploration. Uh, it's particularly if you want to run the high-end combat sites, you generally tend to bling them out a bit more than what you would do as if you were just using them for general sites. They have a very, very long training time, and if you lose one, you lose skill points on their destruction as well, which is probably the biggest pain of them all. But... If you're looking for high-end exploration content, really these are the only ones that can do that job. So this gives you an idea of sort of the progression that you might want to be looking at. Um, as your skill points increase from the left to the right, um, you run basic data and relic sites using the... Um, Heron, the Astero, the Buzzard, um, and then you can start going into the combat sites using the Stratios and then eventually uh, a T3. So what sort of equipment do you use to explore? Well, probe launcher. Um, it doesn't have to be a sister's probe launcher. I use a, probe launch, a sister's probe launcher because I like the bonuses and I haven't quite got the skills for the Tech 2 yet. 
but that is the most important module. This allows you to launch your probes and to scan down sites and actually just do the actual exploration itself. You need some probes to load it with, otherwise that's no good. Um, if you can fit a cloaking device, fit a cloaking device. Um, if you're using a Tech 2 or um, a Sisters of Eve, then fit a Covert Ops. If you're using a T1, then fit an improved or prototype. You need a Renic Analyzer, a Data Analyzer, so these can actually help you hack the sites. A Gravity Capacitor, it's optional, but if your skills are a bit on the low side, a small a Gravity Capacitor can give you just that little extra bump up on probe strength, which will allow you to scan down sites better. A Cargo Scanner, again, this is kind of optional. I don't use one personally, but what you can do is use cargo scanners to target a can, scan it, see what's in it, and then make a decision on whether or not you want to hack that can or just explode it. And this is currently my um, Astero fit, and this is what I use. So as you can see, I've got um, a cloaking device and a probe launcher, a prop mod, two scanners, I've got a disruptor because I also like hunting um, other explorers as well if they decide to get in my way. Um, I've got an armor repper, uh, a resistance plating to help buff my resistances a bit, a drone damage amplifier and a damage control. Uh, I've got a gravity capacitor in the rigs and I've also got um, a couple of armor tanking mods in there as well. So as you can see that all fits up quite well. Now depending on how you want to do it, um, how you want to fill a ship up, it's entirely up to you. But this one I find is the most generic, um, useful sort of ship that I have. You may want to swap out the warp disruptor for uh, a cargo scanner if you literally just want to do um, general exploration. And you may want to take the um, drone damage amplifier out for another tank mod if you're just looking to do general exploration as well. So what other useful tools are there? Um, we all like enjoying using our tools outside of um, game as well. Well, there's, there's two particular ones that you should uh, be looking at. Um, we've got Deep Space by um, Artemis Anva. Um, they are a test person, but Sight is a um, signature logging site. So as you go around uh, the systems, you can put in signatures, copy and paste them into there. Every time you go into a new system, the page refreshes and you can see which sites have been scanned down. And this will help make your uh, exploration as you go from system to system a lot more effective because you'll go, I know what that is, don't need to scan it, I can ignore it. The second one, of course, is obviously Dotlan as well. Um, Dotlan maps, you can see I've got the map of Fountain on there. And you can use this to check how many ships have been destroyed in the last hour. And you can kind of then plan your route around it. Um, plan how to avoid those particular hotspots because there could possibly be gate camps there. Um, you can also um, plan a route. When I'm looking to plan a route, um, then what I'll do is, is I'll use .land to do it. So when you're planning to go exploring, what do you need to do? Um, plan your route in advance using .land. Um, again, use the statistic information that's on there to tell you whether ships have been blown up in there recently to avoid. Um, avoid those areas, go around them. Uh, do a loop, you know, try and one that will take you straight back and end you up where you started again. That's usually a pretty good way of doing that. Um, and also, try different routes. And try and set a route which will last you about the amount of time that you've got. And as you explore and either you're, you start off and you're quite slow at scanning down sites, and as you skill up and you get better and you get faster at scanning sites, then you can... Um, 
lengthen your routes so you can go through them for, because you can go through them faster. Uh, choose a route that takes you away from potentially busy area of space. Um, walk your route first in a fast, cheap ship. Um, an interceptor would be preferable if you don't have, um, if you can fly them, because what you need to be able to do is walk the route round, make bookmarks, so make yourself a safe spot, make yourself gate tacticals if you haven't already got them. And what I mean by gate tacticals are bookmarks that are, you know, more than 150 kilometers from the gates um, that are above or below. Um, because what you want to be doing is, if there's hostiles in local, you don't want to be warping direct to the gate. Um, and this is particularly important if you only have a T1 exploration frigate, because you don't want to be landing on a bubble or anything else like that, and gate tacticals will help you uh, negate those bubbles and things like that. And you can land, go, oh, there's something there, warp off, cloak up, and either go somewhere else or wait it out and for them to leave, basically. Yeah, save all your bookmarks, as I said, for insta docks and insta undocks of stations. Um, sometimes you might have to drop off your loot in certain places, um, but make sure that you've got safe bookmarks to land on, particularly when you're in the NPC area of Fountain. Um, quite often there'll be bubbles or uh, in the way of stations and things like that, so just make sure that you are safe by making insta docks and insta undocks. And particularly if you come across a kickout station as well. Monitor the Intel map for potential hotspots. And again, the Intel map is um, at intel.bravecollective.com. You can get in onto that by registering on our website. Um, and make sure you have spare probes and other items that you might need. And after that, you're ready to go. So any questions so far? And I'll give it a few seconds before uh, I answer that. And if you want to talk in mumble, you can. Okay. So yes, mobile depots um, and Poetics just said uh, he takes a mobile depot as well. They are pretty useful, um, particularly if you find that you're restricted on your fitting requirements um, because you may or may not be able to online both modules or you may not have the space, and certainly if you don't use a, a Heron or anything like that. Um, to fit all the modules you need, so having a mobile depot is pretty useful. I find that that's pretty good to have on a Tech 1 ship, uh, maybe a sister ship, because they have the cargo bays to um, carry them and still have plenty of space left over. But on the Tech 2 frigates, um, you might find that that's a bit restrictive. Okay, so I guess there's no other questions, so really now it's time to undock and get exploring. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to minimise my windows, I'm going to leave the fleet window open, and then I'm going to... Mess around my window settings a little bit. Okay. There we go. So I've saved myself. Um, a destination to do for this and I put all my exploration waypoints in here so let's just add these in from here 
And this is the sort of route that I normally take as well. Um, now we get ready. So I'm just going to check and make sure that I've got everything that I need. Um, as you can see, this some of this stuff here is a result from some of my previous exploration activities, including polarized these Tech 2 blueprints here as well, which are pretty expensive. They're the polarized weaponry that you can get. So check and make sure I've got some nano repair pays, make sure I've got a full set of drones, which you do. And so it's time to um, go. So I'm using an Instagram doc here to get away from that. So first thing I need to do is open up my browser. Uh, login. Just make sure that you guys can't see my login details. Making sure I'm cloaked as well would be helpful. Good. No, oh, I can't log into the insight. There we go. So let's pop this over here. And there we go. I have that. So first thing to do. Excellent is check out the signatures in here. Now, I wouldn't ordinarily recommend um, checking out signatures in YZ, mainly because it gets very, very hairy in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, decloak, launch with probes, So using this site, I can see that here's the probe scanner. You can access your probe scanner by opening it up on here, click and holding on there, and open it up from there. My probes are in space. I can see there's one signature here as well, uh, which the signature ID is GMQ. I look on here, nobody's scanned it down yet. Or at least, if they have scanned it down, they haven't put it in on this website. So click on the map, and load up the map. Here we go. So at the moment they're on what this launch spread formation, but as I know from the red sphere here, that this signature is somewhere in that location. So what I can do is go straight into pinpoint formation. Um, the wife's come home, so I excuse excuse me if there's any background noises. Um, and then what I'll do, expand my probes over the bubble here and then start scanning. The probes are moving into position. They're scanning the signature. And as we can see, it's a wormhole. So I can double click on that, which will then send to my screen on there. And then I move the bubbles in a bit closer. Again move it in again, 
And this is generally how you scan down sites. Um, you pinpoint something, you move the probes in a bit closer. And there you go, it's an unstable wormhole. So, retrieve my probes. I'm going to warp to this wormhole and see what it is. Now, Spadge has already added this in, but what I would do is I'd do that, copy it, and then paste it. Okay, so here we have a wormhole. Now this is a K162 wormhole, which means somebody has already come through it from the other side. Um, now it's looking very red, which means it's probably a high level wormhole. So I click on the information, an unstable wormhole in deep space, wormholes this time, blah, blah, blah. Wormhole leads to deadly unknown parts of space. And deadly means it's basically a very high level um, wormhole. Probably don't want to go in there. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to cover wormholes too much. Um, it's going to be scanning in K space. So here we go. So I'm going to go off to the first stop. Now, of course, if there's any questions, this is probably a good time to be asking them because I'll spend a lot of time floating around. So feel free to type them in fleet. through the gate. Okay, so you can see automatically that this page has showed up already. Um, so you can see now, let's have a look, refresh these, because sometimes these block out. None of these signatures are here anymore. So this combat site and these wormholes are all gone. So I'm going to remove these from here. And then we'll move on to the next site. Now there's nobody in local. So I know I can walk back to gate and I'm going to use this time to reload my probe launcher. Okay, so we're in the next system. So there's three signatures in here, and I know that XSD966, which is this top one here, is a combat site. I'm not interested in that combat site, so I can ignore that result. And then we've also got GJV252 as well. Um, that's not here anymore, so I can delete that. And I know that there's now two new signatures which haven't been scanned in the system. So what I do, launch my probes, burn away from gate, uh, better make sure I'm burning away from gate. Yeah, I am. Good. So going to put my probes into pinpoint formation again. Now, thankfully, all these signatures are clustered right on top of each other, so this should make it quite easy to scan these down. Okay, so first one to pop up, looks like it's a new combat site. So look down from the top, position the probes, look down from the side, position probes, 
I feel quite confident that I can reduce the bubble down twice on these. So that's a Serpentis base, so paste it in, submit, and there we go. So now I want to, I can ignore that because I'm not going to be able to run those in my Stero. So I want to find where this second one is. Now I know it's somewhere over here. Oh, there it is, right down the bottom. So look at it from the side, bring the probes down, look from above, move it over, shrink the bubble, and scan it. Oh, and we have our first sight. So shrink the bubble down again, move it over, hit scan. Now this is a data sight, so this data sight provides things like data cores, can provide some blueprints, um, and provides other general stuff which is useful for uh, Tech 2 production. So now we've got that. I will close my star map. Then warp into it. Okay, so here we go. So these little white diamonds are all hackable cans, so let's fly over to this data bank. Now because I have both a data and a relic analyzer, it means that I can um, hack any site that I want. Now data sites generally tend to be worth a lot less. Sometimes they can yield good stuff, but generally they are worth a lot less than relic sites. It'll probably help if I have my afterburner on. And here we go, now we're on the hacking minigame. So, purpose of this is to basically find the system core. So, I'm going to travel along these nodes here. A good rule of thumb is, uh oh, didn't want to hit one of those. Now, these defense subsystems um, reduce your virus strength here, which means you have a less ability to hack a site. So, I want to get rid of that. But as you can see, it hurt me quite a lot to get rid of it. Now a good rule of thumb for these sites is, is that the actual container that I want to hack is very often on the opposite side from where I want where you start. Now in this case it hasn't. Now that's a repair tool, so this repair tool will help me bring my health back up. And that's a useful one too, that's a utility subsystem. Oh, look, immediately I've got another one of those. Oh, and I'm probably going to fail this hack now, but you watch. Yep, told you. So I failed that particular hack, but you do get a second chance. Let's hope this time it's a bit kinder. 
Oh, these are even worse. These actually buff the strength of other nodes, so I want to get rid of that straight away. There we go. And as you can see, it actually improved the health of the other nodes as well while I was hacking that, so you always have to get rid of those ones as soon as you see them. Oh, that's a useful tool. And I'll show you what this does in a minute. Now, I can use this to attack a node uh, without having to click on it. So I click on that to start it attacking, and then I can go and do something else. And while I'm doing something else, it will take care of that node for me, which means I don't lose any health. Oh, that's useful too. And that one's useful too. Okay. So I've hacked all of these. I don't know where anything is. Uh, let's try taking this one out. Oh, that's useful. Oh! <laughs> and I lost it. And it exploded. But, hey-ho, that sometimes happens, and that's my fault for being a scrub and not having Tech 2 scanning equipment. But, I am training it, so we'll be there soon. Oh, that's Mining Frigate. Don't know why I'm trying to mine the frigate. Gary. Okay, so straight off one of these nodes. Well, please let me know, guys, if you can hear the TV in the background as well. Oh, these ones are being tough today. Hmm. Yeah, these are being really tricky today. What's going on? But this can show you how difficult some of these can be. Aha! Found a core. So, this is the core I want to hack. Hack that. And now I can open the can. And what have I got? Well, all of that for not a lot. Gonna loot that. Let me go on to the next one. Oh, look at that. Straight away found the core. And that's two and a half mil right there, so that's pretty good. Oh, 
Okay, let's go to the next one. There we go. So now we're down to the last two cans. And then I will be opening up um, this lesson to a question and answer session at Mumble. That was perfect because I wasn't sure I had enough health to um, kill that node, but now I do. Now we're on to the last site. So let's see how quickly we can get through this one. Now, a green core is a low level can, um, a red core is a high level can, so there's 5 million isk in that can, which is pretty good. I don't want the carbon. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to head back to home base. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what's hacking about. Um, relic sites can often yield a lot more than a data site will. Data sites generally tend to be a bit trashy, but if you're into your production and things like that, then they can be very, very valuable to you because you can get all the components to make tech to um, production from them. Uh, also, you can get some unique blueprints and you can get some unique skill books as well, so they're pretty useful. Relic sites um, will give you quite often the high-end Tech 2 salvage, which the majority of the places you get Tech 2 salvage from is the relic sites. And you can, for example, find up to 75 million isk in one can if you wanted to, if you're lucky. And then, of course, you go on to um, the higher level sleeper sites and things like that.
<laughs> and so now I'm going to warp home and I'll be closing the feed and then we'll go to question and answers on uh, Mumble. But uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope this wasn't too boring to watch. I hope it was actually informative and useful. Um, a copy of this will be up on YouTube at some point. But to give you an idea of the amount of ISK I can earn from exploration, if we go into my item hanger, um, bar the ammunition, all of this stuff, this stuff, is from exploration, that's 51 million isk there. And then I can take this stuff out of here, that's another boop, boop, boop. Uh, 8 million isk, and that's from one relic site. And then if I show you what I have for sale up in station at the moment, I've got around 298 million isk worth of stuff up for sale. Um, there are some other bits and pieces in there as well, but a lot of it is exploration loot. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Hope this was actually useful, and we're going to take a five-minute break, and I'll open up uh, a question and answer session on Mumble. Thank you very much.